What's up guys, my name is Brandon and just as expected within a couple of days after the official release of iOS 16, Apple returns with the first developer beta of iOS 16.1 and as usual this should be out for public beta testers pretty soon. And along with this iOS release we also got iPadOS 16.1 beta 2, watchOS 9.1 beta 1, and tvOS 16.1 beta 1. And taking a look at the size of this update you could see it came in over 5 gigabytes for me on my iPhone 13 Pro Max which was coming from the iOS 16 RC or the final version. So expect a pretty large download. And if you head into our settings to check out the build number, let's go to general about, and you will see right here actually that new in 16.1, they actually took away where it shows the build number before you have to tap on iOS version. So now you have to tap in there to see the build number again. So you can see it is 20B5045D. So there is a D at the end of the build number, which indicates we have a few betas to go. And it does also give us some details about the update, really not many details, but it says this update includes improvements and bug fixes for your iPhone. But I have news for you guys. There are definitely some new features added here in 16.1. So now let's go ahead and take a look at those new features and changes in this update. And first off, if you take a look up at the status bar, you will notice that the SOS icon looks different. So not only is it less opaque, kind of blends in with the background, but also the text is a little bit smaller and we have the dots underneath. So just for reference, here's what it looked like on iOS 16. It just showed SOS. Now, if you swipe down, you will see it says SOS only over there on the left, and it's the same here on 16.1, but the view from the actual home screen looks different. Also new in this update, if you have to press on a lock screen and you tap on customize, you will see that you no longer have to edit your lock screen before you can edit your home screen. So before on 16.1, and this never made sense to me, I don't know what Apple was thinking, but to edit the home screen from you know editing the lock screen here, you had to go tap on done, and then you had to either set a wallpaper pair or then go to customize home screen and then change it well now in 16.1 when you tap on customize you get the option to choose either to customize your lock screen or your home screen so if we tap on home screen it takes us right to this page right here and we could change it to whatever we would like and then if you tap on done it will take you back right here i am so glad that's been fixed that was definitely one of my biggest complaints about ios 16 all along if we head into our settings and go down to the battery section you will notice that it now says battery health and charging. So before it would just say battery health. Now it says and charging. And the reason for that is if we tap in here, we have a brand new option in 16.1 called clean energy charging. So it says iPhone will try to reduce your carbon footprint by selectively charging when lower carbon emission electricity is available iPhone learns from your daily charging routine so it can reach full charge before you need to use it. So this is an awesome feature, especially when you have millions of millions of iPhones, you know, using clean energy charging. So definitely make sure that stays on. It is on by default. I will be testing this out and seeing if it kind of hinders with charging or anything like that. So I will let you guys know in my Apple Weekly episode, either this weekend or next weekend, how this kind of affects charging and things like that, if at all. And if you're on an iPhone 10R iPhone 11, iPhone 12 mini, or iPhone 13 mini, you might have noticed something else when you went into the battery menu here. And that's because you guys now also get the battery percentage and the status bar. So Apple said they weren't going to add this to other devices in a support document, but it seems like they changed their mind. And now the battery percentage and the status bar is available for all devices with a notch. So I repeat, iPhone 10R, iPhone 11, and both iPhone 12 and 13 minis now get the battery percentage and the status bar. Now you guys can stop complaining about it. Another change in this update is if we take a screenshot and then we tap on done before in iOS 16, we got these options right here and it was in a menu that came up from the bottom. Well, now with 16.1, if we tap on done, you will see that the UI is much better. We get a menu that kind of just pops out from the done button up there. So we have the same options, but we now have added glyphs and you can see that it just looks so much better than it did on iOS 16. You'll also notice that save to files has been moved up ahead of quick note now whereas quick note was ahead of files before if we head back into our settings and go to general you will notice that we have a new section here for matter accessories so apple is preparing for matter to take over that is definitely going to be a massive change for smart home you know products so this is going to be the new standard and you can see we have a whole new section for matter accessories now when you tap on edit i assume that's where you're going to be able to 
add, move around and remove your different accessories that you have paired. And if we go into our Siri and search settings, you will notice that we have the call hang up option in here now. So this has been moved and it says you can now say, hey Siri, hang up. And it's supported during phone and FaceTime calls. So that was there in 16, but it was in a different section. Now it's been moved to, in my opinion, the right place. We can now fully delete the wallet application. So before on iOS 16, you can see there, you were not able to delete it. It just says remove from home screen. But now when you tap on remove, you're able to full on delete the wallet application. And this is only a thing due to antitrust concerns over Apple Pay. The Live Activities API has also returned with iOS 16.1. So the framework is available for developers. And Apple did also publish a documentation page on how to display live data on the lock screen with Live Activities. So it looks like we might actually see Live Activities when 16.1 officially rolls out. Now, one of the biggest features in iOS 16 was the shared library. And for whatever reason, Apple decided to delay that until a future release. So it was not available in the final public release of iOS 16. But now with 16.1, it appears to be back. So now if you tap on the three dots, it shows that we can move to personal library or move to our shared library. So there's no confirmation just yet if this is going to be available in 16.1. Apple has not said that, but it looks like it is because it's back here in the options. We could also go into our settings photos and we have shared library right there as far as bugs go there are a few bugs here in this update as well so if we go to our settings and then go up to general and then software updates for whatever reason i keep getting this right here where it says unable to check for update that is what you normally get when you're in airplane mode or when you're just not connected to a network but i'm clearly connected to a network and i still get that every time and the reason this is a bug and kind of annoying is because i've been trying to go into automatic updates and you have to time it right and keep spamming it to get into that section of your settings so that is definitely a bug however a much bigger bug in ios 16.1 is this i'm just gonna let you watch this and see for yourself so you know i was trying to turn a focus mode off from my lock screen and for whatever reason my device just completely freaked out and it kept changing my focus modes and my home screens just non-stop it would not stop changing between different home screens and focus modes like i wasn't even able to tap on the button up here to stop recording i had to keep tapping it like a hundred times before it finally stopped recording and then after that you know i had to reboot my device for this to stop you can see it's lagging i try to switch to a different home screen but it doesn't help it just keeps going back and forth and it was like complete madness on my device i could not do anything so i had to force restart my device so just beware if you update i mean this is a beta it should be expected but you could run into a bug like this where you are forced to force restart your device and taking a look at the release notes for this update you could see it's really just a lot of home known issues so mainly related to matter accessories you could see there is a nice bullet list here of known issues for home we do also have room plan so there's a bug that was resolved related to existing surfaces and also an ad network known issue so really nothing important mentioned in the release notes and then as as far as performance goes performance so far feels about the same as ios 16 i mean aside from that major bug relating to the focus modes and my screens changing everything's been fine i mean it's really been nothing too crazy nothing that seems much different from ios 16 so don't expect any type of performance boost when you update especially to a beta 1 of 16.1 i wouldn't really expect anything with the final release either but you can see i did run a geekbench test and i scored a 1740 on the single core and a 4765 on the multi-core see how that compares to the final version of ios 16. the single core was actually exactly the same so 1740 on both and then i got a 4765 which was compared to a 4781 so slightly lower but not bad for a first beta and then as far as battery life goes it's too early to tell if battery life is better or worse than ios 16 but i would assume that battery life might be a little bit better here not in the first beta but eventually when 16.1 rolls out to the public now the only thing i'm worried about with battery life and it's more related to the charging is that new feature right here for clean energy charging i'm just not sure if that's going to charge the device up enough i'm really curious to see how that works and again i will report back on that i will let you guys know how that works out but battery life so far again I can't tell a difference. I wouldn't expect a major difference on the first beta. We may see it once the final release rolls around, but like I mentioned previously, I would not expect any major battery improvements until like the 16.3, 16.4 area. All right, so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up is most likely going to be iOS 16.1 beta two, and I would expect that next week. So Apple usually for the 0.1 releases is on a weekly schedule from the start. 
So that puts iOS 16.1 beta 2 next week, maybe on the 19th through the 21st. Sometime in there is when I would expect that. And then as for a public release of iOS 16.1, it depends, but we're probably going to have a few betas, maybe like four betas or so. So that would put us right here around mid to late October for a final release of 16.1. And that update could also come around the time that we get another Apple event. So we are expecting another Apple event in October. So we could see that iOS release and iPad OS, Mac OS, all of those release around the same time sometime in mid to late October. So anyways, there you have it. That is iOS 16.1 beta one and what is new in the software. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 16 and iPhone 14 coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.